So first of all, I understand that this video is glitchy and we're at the point where Sora is literally better than this narration where it actually has more frames. But if you're watching this, you know what Sora is. I'm not going to explain it to you. So in the background, I'm going to play some of the AI videos that Sora has generated. These are the ones that everybody can see on the website. And what I want to do is not rehash what you can read on a website, but rather start making predictions and talk about the existentialism that you maybe as a 3D artist or a videographer or whatever uh, are probably feeling. So uh, kind of the most obvious thing that I watched an MKBHD video talk about is stock footage is dead. If you can <laughs> write something with text and generate it and do this several times to iterate, I would never, nobody would ever uh, pay for stock footage unless you need something highly, highly realistic and specific. Uh, but at that point, I predict, so here's one of my predictions. Again, this is just going to be a ramble. Uh, text to video is kind of like the weakest implementation uh, of what I see for this. Uh, I see uh, image to video coming next and why would that be better because if you need something like realistic and like based on a certain scene you feed in a photo and you say imagine that this is the first frame of a video continue it okay so at that point when we have uh, image to video you you essentially have full control because video is composed of frames and if each one of those frames can be used to generate future stuff well where where does this lead Prediction number two. So prediction number one, image to video, and I'll talk more about that in a second. Prediction two uh, is that uh, interpolation is going to get really, really good. So not only can you run image to video, but I'm predicting that if you have two images, one here and one three seconds in the future, maybe we can kind of interpolate the area in between. It's almost like we're generating a video forwards and backwards and somehow merging them with like logic and all this. Why would that be cool other than doing slow motion? Well, remember how like in video games, some of the fastest speed ups recently have been less so getting good GPUs, but more so uh, making incredible AI denoisers where you only need to render like 10% of the image and it will uh, automatically do the um, optics denoising. And do So what if like in a video game, instead of having every frame kind of render only 10%, what if you only render two frames per second, right? And you interpolate everything in between. Even if you're rendering at 10 FPS, that's a major save if you're doing a 60 FPS gaming. So what I'm saying is if it computes faster than denoising, which isn't guaranteed, maybe this takes way longer, but if it does, uh, this will literally be the ultimate... Um, kind of like interpolation tool to use uh one for slow motion but two also for generating less data and figuring out everything in between including physics because it seems to have a i i would just say understanding given these examples of uh physics and knows what a initial condition uh, will lead to a uh, final condition. Number three, and again, this is not that big of a stretch given prediction number one, where again, we have image to video. Uh, prediction number three is gonna be video infill. What that means is imagine you have a video, but you don't like a small component of it. You're filming a, um, a room, right? But you want to like change the bed that you're filming, make it look like you know, you're, you're more rich or something. You just highlight that area, you say, replace the bed with something else, okay? So video infill basically means don't just generate a video, but generate a section of the video uh, that makes sense in the context of the scene. And this is probably the one that's uh, the most scary uh, to VFX artists and stuff like that, because what that would mean is now you literally do have a make VFX button, that meme where nobody appreciates what visual effects are. They think you just tell the computer to do something and there's no skill involved, well, maybe uh, that is actually going to be the case. So uh, if they're like, remove the microphone, you just highlight the area, you text, you say, remove the microphone. This already exists. Um, it's called like in painting, infill, whatever, uh, remove background. But you could take it up a notch where now you uh, 
uh, kind of pick my face and you say, replace the face, that's a deep fake. Or you say, make me look older. That's like whole mo- departments are made to do this in movies like The Irishman's kind of a famous one where they made De Niro not look ancient, right? Um, infill could be could, it could mean so much more. Now, again, everything I'm saying is basically an extension of image to video, which I bet you they've done internally. Uh, one of my last predictions is now, this is kind of a leap, is going to be image to 3D model. And this already exists, but it, it's real shit. It doesn't look good. It's still pretty impressive. But if you can take an image, like let's say you t- take a picture of my face, that's the image. And now you say, synthesize a video where you're saying, now walk around the head. So in other words, I'm saying, Take a picture of my face and tell me what's to the side and behind it and everything. If you can do an image to video on that, and again, it seems to have temporal coherence, physics understanding, you could then run a very kind of weird photogrammetry on it. And maybe it's consistent enough that photogrammetry actually works where image turns into a turntable video, turns into a 3D model. And that will actually be the ultimate test of Uh, Does this video have coherence in terms of uh, three dimensions? So what I'm seeing is that text to video is obviously great, but it's like the weakest amount of control you can have. What you really want is image to video. And kind of the interesting thing is with like the image uh, infilling, inpainting thing that turns into video is that this already exists in Dolly. You can already, or maybe just Dolly too. You can... uh, pick an area or unstable diffusion and you say replace it with this well now if you can repair a single frame and you can propagate that into a video uh, now you have a video infill so basically what are my predictions stock footage yes but in a way this has already been done with uh, gen 2 by runway what i'm interested in namely is image to video this will mean that video games might run substantially faster where you only need to render like a 15th of the amount of data 2 fps instead of 30 or maybe two frames for 60 fps whatever as many frames as you feel like is necessary it will make video games faster it will allow uh, video in painting it will allow video interpolation hopefully that's kind of the key component and it will ultimately result in image to 3d model which as a given means there's also text to 3D model. But this is just my rambling. This is just my, I wouldn't even say conspiracy. This is my feature request. Um, And then as for the uh, existential component of like uh, for myself and maybe for people watching, you might do art in some capacity as a hobby or as a job. Well, uh, the 2D artists are already facing this. Like Dolly wipes uh, 2D image uh, generation, I guess. And you could say, no, a 2D artist has a better vision and all this. Sure. But you can't really argue with, give me a hundred concept art pieces immediately, right? It's kind of like the thing where we thought chess was the peak of human intelligence. And now you can't even beat a uh, com- stockfish computer in chess. And we say, eh, whatever. Chess is for the computers. This is the same thing. Okay. Um, What's my point? Um, So if you're a VFX artist, whatever, you're feeling threatened, that is totally understandable. There will be a bit of a area, a little gap where you can leverage these tools for your workflow. But of course, the inevitability is getting replaced, um, which might not be as simple as it sounds. It might not just be like jobs are gone. But in some cases, it is like that, right? Like NASA used to have a lot of calculators, people who calculate that is what a calculator is a bunch of people with pen and paper making sure that the missile goes or the rocket goes in the correct direction correct trajectory that is replaced with a calculator we don't think about it we don't say oh the calculators should come back the people who calculate no that was seen as peak human creativity in a way or our uh intellectual superiority and that isn't okay Clearly, same thing's about to happen in all kind of digital domain. So text, image, video, 3D models all about to coalesce, um, which is almost kind of like a very tiny take on this, right? Like if you see 
text to video and you're like, oh, now you can do image to video and 3D models. I'm like, sure. And I, I think my predictions are going to be correct. But I think the ramifications are going to be way bigger. Like, because like the more the real world and the digital world become indistinguishable, uh, the more you can take pieces from one and the other and kind of merge and replace them. Um, um, I could think of more ideas about that. But um, yeah, so for the VFX Stardust, I, I don't really have advice, and that, that's given for myself. But uh, there, there's always the argument that more jobs are created than lost. You know, <laughs> probably not very comforting anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, you could also think about this. Is, so so that's kind of like the doomer, kind of like the gloomy mentality. But you could also look at the bright side of this as like, whoa. Like one thing I was thinking is some of the glitchy videos they were showing, like the ones where they're like, eh, it didn't work. It still looked real. Okay. Yes, it didn't like physically make sense, but it looked real. And sometimes this is what you're trying to do in video. Like uh, in 2049, Blade Runner. Uh, you had this girl that the hands were intersecting herself. Like, sometimes you intentionally want glitchiness. But my point is, that was actually the most interesting thing for me to watch. Um, because you're seeing something you've never seen before, but it looks surreal. So, one thing I'm looking forward to, not just being like, I'm going to be replaced, but I'm like, okay, at least I can see new things, is the trip sequences. Like, having one thing blend into another, doing these things we've never seen before is something I'm excited to see. Because I think, in a way, that will build in the gaps of uh, creativity that haven't been filled in before. So you could say, oh, this thing isn't po really like capable of being creative, more so than a human. But I can tell you those glitches, in a way, are creativity that I've never seen a person make before. So Sora is a thing, and I've talked about it.